and welcome to Sabrina Speaks. And as requested, this video focuses on displacement value questions and allegation questions. More calculations, basically. So, both of which, when presented with a question on either displacement values or allegation, it can seem a bit scary. But an example of a displacement value question is actually our suppositories. So if you look back to the previous calculations video, on there I showed the formula that needs that you need to use when faced with a suppositories question. Now let's actually look at an example. As always, I apologise that these posters are a little bit small and that the camera is right up in my face. Um, but if you go to either our Facebook page or our brand new Twitter page, you'll be able to download the images from there. So have them in front of you whilst we're going through this. So in the last calculation video, I explained that the, form the formula for working out suppository question, it starts off with the total number of suppositories that we need, timesing it by the weight, and we minus it from again the total number of suppositories times by the active ingredient divided by the displacement value. So with this question, we have a prescription for 10 2.5 gram suppositories. Each one um, contains 20 milligrams of active ingredient. We need to make a 10% overage and we need to work out what quantity of base is needed to, to fulfill this prescription, including that 10% overage. Why would they include 10% overage? Because they wanted us to do an extra step and just annoy us. So let's just go with it. So first and foremost, our total. Well, we know there's, there's 10 suppositories, but now we need to take into account this 10% overage. Therefore, it's going, to, it's going to be 10 suppositories plus our 10% overage. 10% 10 of 10 is 1, 10 plus 1 is 11. So in total now we have 11 suppositories. And we literally just plug in the values into our formula. So we've got our total. We're going to times it by our um, weight of the suppository. So we know that's 2.5 grams. We're going to minus it again from our total, our 11, and times it by our active ingredient. Now, because we're working in grams here, we need to work in grams here. So whilst it tells us it's 20 milligrams, 20 milligrams is the same as saying 0 0.02 grams. Don't get caught out there. If you put 20 there, you're messing up the units, it's going to be wrong. So always work with the same units and usually always work with grams. So we've got our 11 times and get by our active ingredient and dividing that by our displacement value. And then we get our answer. It's that simple. Just remember that formula, write it down, Put it in a big poster, um, stick it on your wall, whatever it takes, because they won't necessarily give you that um, equation in the exam. At least I don't think they will, so learn it off by heart. So as well as questions to do with suppositories, displacement value questions can actually creep up if we see the word vial or reconstitute. So if you see those words, alarm bells, this is a displacement value type question. Actually, it's not too hard a one to get your head around. So let's look at this example. So you reconstitute a vial containing four grams of um, drug X to 20 mils using water for injection. 60 mils or 5% dextrose is added to dilute the solution. Calculate the concentration of drug X in the solution in milligrams per mil. Now, remember, first thing first, we need to pick out what are the key pieces of information here. And actually this 5% dextrose is just there to throw us so let's just ignore that and I think with questions like these it's best if you can look at it visually so let's think about what this question is actually saying we've got a four gram vial and in this vial I've got now 20 mils along comes this 60 milligram uh, these 60 mils and so altogether I've now got 80 mils because I've got that 20 mils I originally had chucked in some of the 60 mils so now I've got 80 mils but that four grams has still remained there. So instead of having four grams in 20 mils, I've now got four grams in 80 mils. So that's, that's what this bit represents. So with that four grams in 80 mils, the question is asking me in milligrams per mil. Well, in one mil, the way that I get from 80 to one mil, I divide by 80. So what you do to one side, you always do to the other side. Therefore, four divided by 80 gives 0 0.05 grams. But hang on a second, the question's asking milligrams per mil. So if it's 0 0.05 grams, we know that that's equivalent to 50 milligrams, so the answer is 50 milligrams per mil. 
that simple, that easy. And actually drawing out these little pictures makes it a lot easier to sort of visually realise what's going on. And I feel like that, that kind of helps to answer the question as well. So now let's have a look at an allegation question. And actually allegation questions aren't too hard to get your head around once you know how to use the method. Now I apologise if the questions don't make that much sense. It's not so much the scenario I want you to focus on, it's more the values and how to use the method. So let's look at this question. You have solution of A of 5% and you have B of 25%. How much of need is to produce is needed to produce 150 mils of 18%? Okay, well, first and foremost, let's look at the values we have. We've got 5%, we've got 25%, 18%, and 150 mils. And what we're looking for is that 18%. And 18 is what we're going to put in the middle. So what we're after, what we're looking for, goes in the middle. Now, either side of that is going to be the other percentages that we need to use. So our percentage of solution A, which is our 5%, and our percentage of solution B, which is 25%. So as we can see, we've got 18 in the middle, and then we've got our 5%, and we've got our 25%. Now, we need to work out how much of each part is needed. And the way that we do that is we subtract, but we subtract diagonally. So what do I mean? Well, we do 18 minus 5 go diagonal and put through um, 13 and we do 25 minus 18 and again we're diagonal and we get seven and these are our parts now don't fall into the trap of thinking that because we've done it this diagonal thing that, that now means that there is seven parts of 25 and 13 parts of five percent no 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 we work it out diagonally but what it actually represents is that we've got seven parts of our 5%, just think it's on the same line. So we've got seven parts of 5% and we've got 13 parts of 25%. Now the question could end there. But what this question is asking is, how much is needed to produce 150 mils of 18%? So now we need to take into account that 150 mils. So we know we've got seven parts of solution A and we've got 13 parts of solution B. So all together, we're going to have 20 parts. All the parts together, you just add them. So we get 20 parts. So now, taking into account this 150 mils, what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, I've got 7 out of 20, because 20 was my total, times that by 150. So, and you do the same then for working out solution B. 13 over 20 times by 150. And then we get our two values. So the top value is going to represent our solution A. The bottom one is going to represent our solution B. And to check that we've got the answer right, and remember the beauty of calculation questions is that majority of the time we can either use a second method to check our answers or we can use the answers to then put it back into the question to see if we've got it right. And this is an example of where we can do that. So we've got our two values. If added together, it should make our 150 mils, which in this case it does. So we know we've got that right. So I hope that's cleared up a little better how to go um, about identifying displacement value questions or allegation questions, and importantly, how you actually tackle them and the different methods that you can try and use to tackle them. I mean, with allegation methods, there are other methods that you can use, but personally, I think this is the best one to use. So. Hopefully you find that useful and hope you found this video useful. And if you did, why not give us a thumbs up, give us a like, share, subscribe, join our Facebook page, join our new Twitter page. And as I said, I'll put all this material on both Facebook and Twitter so that you can look at it more clearly. Um, and until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revising.